Now we are coming for the second speaker, Professor Jos Maria from Spain, and he is a professor of medicine and ethics, clinical director of ICU Hospital University, Virgin de Lauricio, Sevilla, Spain. I told it correct, Dr. Yes, Josie. It, it is correct. <laughs> okay, welcome. And he is going to talk about the diagnosis of brain death. Welcome, Professor Josie. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the, the organizers uh, for inviting me to, to be here. It is a big honor to share with uh, this uh, the experience about the, the brain death diagnosis with uh, so uh, fantastic uh, colleagues, uh, excellent colleagues. So uh, I would like uh, uh, to, to <laughs> make some thoughts uh, about why, why uh, Probably a still brain death. It is a, it's a little point of a problem, no? In, in, in brain, uh, in, in the organ donation and transplantation. No? Probably most of you know well this doctor. No? It has been mentioned by Professor Doyle. No, he is the the Professor Christopher Barnard. No, in the cover of Time because famous, very famous because he he made the first uh, uh, transplant, heart transplant. However, I don't know if, if some of you know uh, these uh, doctors. No, I, I am sure that most of you don't know them. No, because probably we know mass very well the, the transplant surgeons, but this, we don't know well who is the people behind the, the, the donation in the in the diagnosis of brain death. No, these are members: like Professor uh, uh, Henry Beecher, uh, Professor Schwabs, Adam that were of the Harvard Medical School, the, the, the group of the Harvard Medical School, who participated in the, in the design of the criteria of brain death. Probably this still is a not very, very famous part of donation and transplantation. We can talk about death or brain death diagnosis, but real the question, the key question, and Professor Doyle has mentioned some uh, uh, people against the concept of brain death, about the, against the implementation of brain death, is if death by neurological criteria is the death of the person. If the brain is the person, and that is the key, because all, all of us know very well that uh, most of the organ, most of the cells, more of the tissues, it, the, of the people in brain death are still alive. The key is if the person is dead and is the brain have enough substrate, organic substrate, to for maintain the person. For thinking about this idea, I think we have biological, anthropological, and philosophical reasons. And I want to uh, support some of these uh, uh, ideas. Uh, uh, biological reason for for mentioned that the brain, that the person is in the brain. We can see this slide. How many people are in the slide? One or two? Probably most of you say two. Why? Because there are, there are two heads, but not because there are two nose, because there are two brain. Anthropological reasons, of course. There are also anthropological reasons to explain why the brain, uh, the, the, the brain is the key of the human being. We can see the evolution from the monkey to other hominid, to the person, to the human being. What is the main difference between the, the last one and the, the one before? The main difference is the brain, the capacity to think and feeling, to have vision of the life. And philosophical reasons, of course, we don't have uh, enough time in this session for, for talking about it, but only the brain of one person have possibility of immanency, what means the possibility of connection with the environment, the possibility of reception of information of the environment, and to transform this information in something useful for the mission of the life. Only the human being at the base is the brain have out of finality, we know what is our destiny in our lives. Indivisibility, we can, we can cut different part, parts of the body, but only the part that maintains the brain is the part that 
the maintain the, the real person, the completion. There are a lot of philosophical, anthropological, and biological reasons to maintain the idea that the person is in the brain. So usually we talk about brain death, but probably it's not a very, uh, very uh, precise way to express. Now, probably we should say diagnosis of death by neurological criteria. There are only one death, no different death. The key is the approach to death of the person is by neurological criteria instead of cardiocirculatory uh, criteria as we use in other circumstances also have been uh, already mentioned. A concept that was coined in 1968, the Harvard Medical School and also the World Medical Association uh, uh, accepted this, this concept. The definition of death, we can define of death in different ways and the signs of death are different. Uh, usually the cardiac arrest is the more classical way to, uh, to uh, identify the, the, the death of the person, the absence of movements, the, or, or even the maximum, the putrefaction of the body and so on. This was the classical way of death, cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, uh, uh, damage of central nervous system, uh, death of the brain, death of the cell of the body, putrefaction, but this classical way of death was uh, changed by the development of the ICU uh, cardiopulmonary uh, resuscitation. And only at this point, we accepted that there are three main functions that are the frontier between death and life. The function of central nervous system, the cardiac arrest, and the absence of, of, of breathing. The, if there is a relationship between them, because some of them can uh, start the, the, the other one. But nowadays, and consequently, that the brain, the heart, and the lungs are the key organs for the life of the person. But nowadays, we know that we can live without the heart. You know? It's the heart of the recipient of the donor, go to another recipient, and the person is the same with another heart. So the heart is not the base of the life of the human being. The same for the lungs one, the ECMO the machine or transplantation of life. The only thing we can not trans make transplantation is the brain. And in the hypothetical case, we could make transplantation of the brain, the person goes with the, with the brain. And what are the reasons for brain death diagnosis? I think that's very important. I have a list. One reason could be donation and transplantation. One reason could be the use of ICU bed for other patients to relieve cost of health system. But the real reason the more important reason that we must uh, have, it is the last one, the dignity of the dead person, the dignity of this body that remains in the ICU connected to a machine, but the person is not dead, it's only the body. And a secondary value, it is the dignity of uh, the donation and transplantation, the use of the ICU. But we, from the ethical point of view, I have clear that the, the, the reason for brain death is not donation and transplantation, but the dignity of the dead person, and after that, to add a new value. So, and it is also a point of reflection and the discussion in some countries in the moment. After diagnosis of brain death, we can decide it, but we drop part of the treatment, continue the treatment, or cessation of the treatment. From the ethical point of view, because to maintain, again, the dignity of the person who died and the body who remained in the ICU, it is the cessation of all treatment. And the cessation of all treatment can be two ways. Disconnection of the ventilator, if this patient is not going to be a donor, ventilatory disconnection, or circulatory disconnection. Put it is down in the operating room for donation. So, the, it is the best and the ethics activity after diagnosis of brain death, disconnection in the ICU or in the operating room. And now we are going to start with some of the problems that have been mentioned uh, before. The problems of the different concepts of brain death nowadays in the world. Brain stem death, we mainly coined by the, the Professor Christopher Pallis in UK 
However, don't forget, this is the paper for agnostic significance of the brainstem. For establishing that, we know the key is the absence of activity of irreversible loss of activity of brainstem in this case. So brainstem death means absence of brainstem function, but cerebral uh, hemisphere activity is possible. And the diagnosis is clinical and no instrumental. Second concept, and what is, it is decreasing, but in the in the 90s, what a, a, a flow of, of doctors who, who support the neocortical death, the supporters of this kind of concept that of that they say, what is the most important for the human life? The content of the consciousness of some reflexes of the brain stem. And they say, it's more important the content of the consciousness. So neocortical death, lack of activity of telencephalum, absence of neocortical function, subcortical and brainstem function are possible. The diagnosis is clinical, but clinical, the instrumental, of course, only analyzing the consciousness. Typical cases of the vegetative state, the permanent vegetative state of anencephalic. And the whole brain death, coined by Harvard Medical School, Adam Fridge, professor of Henry Beecher, absence of activity of brain, absence of activity of brain stem. So, absence of neurological function or central nervous system affecting the spinal cord. Cerebral hemisphere activity is not possible, and it is a difference between with the uh, brainstem. And the, the diagnosis is clinical plus instrumental. So it has been shown the different ways, the different problems, the different, each, even each frontier means different uh, practice in brainstem diagnosis. And probably it is one of the things we must improve. This is a big problem because one person could be alive in one country across the frontier and is dead. But since the ambulance go back, the person is alive. So I think we have to manage this problem nowadays. This is the situation in Europe, for example, brain stem, whole brain death, Spain, for example, brain death, uh, brain stem, Ireland or UK. So in any case, brain death is death. Brain stem death definition, whole brain death definition. I think we have to transmit the idea, the most important diagnosis. And one an idea I think is also very important. Medical diagnosis, it doesn't mean medical diagnosis. We as doctors must be sure about the medical diagnosis. Only after that, we must know it's fulfilled the legal requirements of the country. No, in reverse, no first legal. First must be medical. After it, if legal requirements of the law. Who must establish diagnosis? Again, a point of controversy. One doctor is enough. Some blows, they say, no, one doctor is not. Two doctors is better. Some blows, yes. Three doctors is better. Make no sense. Because if this doctor is much better than one, so 25 doctors must be better than one. The key is not the number, the number of doctors. It's the qualification, the competence of the doctor regarding that, important that. Irreversible damage, we have, for example, a big cerebral hematoma. Before the examination, of course, the patient must have normal arterial pressure. We must control the drugs that have been administered, body temperature is absolutely uh, you uh, mentioned metabolic experiments, sometimes some classical topics, but nobody review that. For example, regarding metabolic experiments, one classic idea, but without support in, 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 the, in the papers, it is, for example, sodium higher than 160 is not, uh, it's not compact, it can mimic brain death. It's never have been published that, for example, no, for example. So, I mean, also, so it is this uh, aspect that this prerequisite must be. Uh, updated. We are using information of 20, 30 years old. Drugs that could interfere brain death. The solemn propofol, theopenta, the more classical in the ICU. We can solve the problem with an antagonist or knowing what is the level of drug. For example, one of the classic topics, no, without effect of, 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 of barbiturates, you cannot establish the diagnosis. Not true. 
people taking phenobarbital is walking by the street with therapeutic level. Of course, must not be established with toxic level. Of course not. But, but, but with, with uh, yes, we can establish with low therapeutic level. And there is a lot of paper that support that. No? This on some of the paper, the relationship of the concentration of barbiturates and the, the flattening EEG or the clinical examination. The other option to stop the perfusion of the drug and to, to be sure, to wait four times the half-life of the drug. For example, midazolam half-life is three milligrams, three hours half-life. So 12 hours, propofol, uh, for maximum four hours and so on. Brain death, absence of function. Again, point of discrepancy. These are some of the activities based in the, uh, in, on, in the, in the brain stem. Photomotor reflex, cornea, oculocephalic, oculovestibular, motor responses, nausea, cough, oculocardiac, spontaneous breathing, or cardiocellular center. However, we can see that no, in all the guidelines are included. I still can, cannot understand why, because all the human beings, we have the same anatomy, the same function in the brain, in the brain stance. I don't know why the frontier between one country and other country. I think my recommendation, do all of these reflexes because all the human beings have the same anatomy. So it is the best way that we can be sure that the, the patient has no activity of the uh, brainstem. This uh, the nucleus, the nucleus in the brainstem, pupillary brain reflex, we know well, the checklist, cornea reflex, eh? okay, mesencephalum, advisable first, the, 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 the reflexes in the, in the mesencephalum, Oculocephalic reflex or by phenomena. First, don't forget in the case of trauma to check if X ray in cervical spine, open the eyes and move the head from side to side, and there is no changes. Uh, no, the, the eyes follow the movement uh, of the head. Okay, this, for example, if we follow this protocol, we can discard the activity of mesencephalum of the middle of the pons, and we have only activity of the lower part of the pons and valve. This could be one advisable uh, uh, protocol. Oculo vestibular reflex, also included only in few uh, guidelines, a few legislations. Check the tympanous membrane, put the head 30 degree horizontal to put the uh, semicircular channel, the, the horizontal semicircular channel in real, uh, horizontal semicircular channel, flash 50 milliliters of water to four degrees. And what happened in patient in brain death? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Forget the stack move, quick, quick movement, slow movement, forget nothing happened. Motor responses, my recommendation to divide the clinical examination of the motor response in four parts. Why? Because there is, uh, in some patients, that uh, also has been mentioned, some uh, spinal cord activity. So, first step the stimulus in the face, and the doctor look at the face. Impossible to see movement, trigeminus and facial nerve. A stimulus in the face, and we look at the body, impossible to see movement and, uh, because, if we, because we are stimulating through geminal territory. A stimulus in the body, and we look at the face. In the face, no movement. We are analyzing the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve. A stimulus in the body, and look at the body. At this point, we complain some movement. So it is a way to differentiate between the spinal cord reflexes and another time of positivity. This uh, possible stimulus here. Don't forget, always try to use the first and the second roof of the trigeminus from the corner to the, the mouth to the upper part of the ear. Up to this line, we are sure we are in the trigeminus territory. This is a frequent mistake. This is not the trigeminus territory. If the patient could have movements after stimulating here, you can see this is the second uh, cervical spine root. This kind of movement, of course, it is important to know how to make the examination and even how to explain according to people who ask about this evolution checklist, nausea, cough, no cough, oculocardiac reflex. It is useful for analyzing the vagus nerve. We use it in the, in the ICU, we use it in the emergency department because after an intense massage of the both eyes in a alive person, there is a bradycardia because the vagus nerve in patient in brain death, nothing happens. And now two centers that are also in the brain stem, the valve. Apnea test, this is 
protocol, there are different ways to do it. The key is to reach more than 60 millimeters of mercury, which is in Pascal, or 20 more than usual. Usually we, we break with, uh, with uh, 40 millimeters of mercury. Take a blood sample, first of all, to be sure to know how long must be the apnea test. Is that the, we know that is a three millimeter of mercury per minute of apnea. At the beginning of the test is 30. We have to wait 10 minutes to reach 60. With this average, it is good to know how long must be the apnea test. No evidence, no evidence of breathing. An atropine test, of course, at the base, the cardio accelerator center is the brain stem. So the dose, uh, as have been mentioned, 0.04 milligram three mill per kilo, three milligram, uh, three milligram that in patient in brain death, nothing happens. We know three milligram, it is very, very high dose. Usually re, that the nurse in the ACU are reluctant. Three milligram doctor, perhaps one milligram, no, three milligram, they know it's a very high dose. What happened in patient in brain death? Nothing happened, no increase of the frequency. Let's check, please. And now, question, is the patient dead? If we are using the concept of brain death, brain stem death, I mean, brain stem death means the, main, the death of the person, it is enough. If we are using the whole brain death, we still have not made the examination of the brain. We don't know what is happening with the brain, but we cannot reach the brain through the brain stem because have no activity. So we need to use instrumental tests for whole brain death, clinical plus instrumental test, clinical examination, instrumental test, clinical examination for whole brain death. We have to examine the brain. If not, we cannot talk about brain death. If we have not made the examination of the brain. Recommendation, the four tests that have 100% of positive predictive value. None of these tests, none tests have 100% of accuracy, but they have 100% of positive predictive value. These are mandatory, yes, for brain, for brain death. So, angiography, it is a very, very old test. You can see this paper of 1956 regarding this, describing this phenomena of no perfusion in patients with severe uh, damage. Normal carotid territory. This is a patient in brain death. You can see here, stopping the carotid territory. These are uh, arteries, the sternal uh, carotid external artery. Normal basilar territory, normal perfusion. Stop the perfusion with the brain. Only the vertebral, but not the basilar. The cervical or scintigraphy, I mentioned 99 by the estimate normal, normal patient in whole brain death, no perfusion of the brain, no perfusion of the brain stem, whole brain death, whole brain death, in child. You can see here a patient with neocortical death, no perfusion of the brain, but normal perfusion of brain stem. So the activity, the brain stem exam, examination it is absolutely normal. A new patient in neocortical death. No consciousness, but they still remain activity in the brain stem, perfusion and clinical examination. And what patient in brain stem death? You can see the examination, no activity if you analyze, but perfusion in the brain still remain activity. Or again, a new patient in whole in brain stem death, no activity. So this no, uh, no activity, no clinical examination, a normal perfusion of the brain. Transcranial Doppler, it is very frequently used in Spain. We have very experience, a lot of experience in our ICU. The evolution to the cerebral circulatory arrest, severe inter intracranial hypertension while the patient is alive. The three patterns compatible with cerebral circulatory arrest, diastole systole separation, reverberating flow, and systolic spikes. And we have to do analysis of the both middle cerebral artery and also the carotid artery. The limitation of cerebral blood flow test, when there is a, a compressive craniectomy, for example, therapeutic or big fracture of the base of the skull, or fontanella very open in children, or less accuracy, or EEG. EEG, this is a sign of a completely flat EEG. You can see the electrocardiogram, the movement of the thorax because of the ventilator, the control line. These are three, only three channels. You can see these spikes. These spikes are synchronous with the electrocardiogram. So you are detecting the electrical activity of the heart with the electrodes in the scalp, which means that there's no activity in the brain. 
other tests with less accuracy, no 100% of positive predictive value, and UCT have no 100% of positive predictive value, so it is not recommended. False positive to angiography, or in this paper in um, intensive care uh, medicine, limitation of computed tomography and geography in the diagnosis of brain death, multimodal capable poten potential, was very useful in the 80s of the last century, but nowadays it is a uh, uh, auditory evoked potential, the evolution to come, changes in the weight form of the, of the ICP, changes in the uh, 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 extraction of oxygen of the brain when the catheter is inserted in the, in the jugular. Uh, this is, uh, so the recommendation to use one test that have 100 positive predictive value, EEG, gammography, Doppler, or SD. You can see here, uh, and we have to do only one of these tests, of course, not all of tests. Children, I have no direct experience in children, but uh, the, the, the task for 90, 98, 87, were very similar to the task for 2011. Uh, probably most of them recommend, recommend to repeat the test. And how many tests? Is it needed to repeat the test? When someone asked me about that, I asked again, how many times we can be there? If they say one, so you have to repeat only one. If they say we can be there too, you have to repeat two. Don't forget, the most important diagnosis, the key is the medical diagnosis, not the legal diagnosis. So if we do the diagnosis of brain death, could you imagine all over the world in the way we have mentioned, all the reflexes of the brain stem, all the reflexes. And one is instrumental test probably fulfill all the legal requirements all over the world. So it is my recommendation. That is not a legal situation, it's a medical situation. And in any case, nowadays, we have to solve this problem. The three different concepts of brain death, whole brain death, clinical examination, instrumental test, uh, brain stem, clinical examination of brain stem, neocortical death only, analysis of the content of the consciousness. So in any case, we know that uh, there is a, it is a process of death. Sometimes we can see some phenomena close to brain death, the phenomena close to brain death. The case is what mentioned in the with Professor Doyle about a patient with breathing, probably the deterioros, claustrocaudal deterioro still remain. No, it was not a false, no? I mentioned that probably. Do we have to no, to accept? It is not that on of life, but of course we need a strict criteria, fulfill all the criteria. Is there the biological criteria death of the person? We ha I have no doubt about whole brain death. Is the death of the person because of philosophical, biological, and anthropological reason is a strict protocol for the diagnosis of brain death. And only that, uh, where I am, I am in Sevilla. This is where I am. am. So, and these uh, are my emails. So don't hesitate to contact me if you uh, want to come to Seville eh, or you want to know something about Brain dead and I could help. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Professor Jose. And I think uh, there is one question. And is the atropine test accurate? Does it has false positive results? No. No. Uh, the, the atropine test, I, 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 of course, it is, it, I, I think it's also mentioned with the, uh, the atropine test and the, in the, and the apnea test, fortunately, they analyze uh, elements of the lower parts of the of the brain stem, and it is very useful because if you analyze from the uh, mesencephalon pons valve, probably when you start this test, uh, in some few patients can have a sleep alive the, and it remain. So the patient is alive because the sleep remains on some test. But in any case, in any case, it is the, have no false positive or, or false positive. Uh, uh, because, and I recommend it, the, and that is because I always recommend first the oculocardiac reflex, because the, cent, the respiratory center, the cardiac inhibitory center, and the inhibitory and center. So you do that, don't, if you see bradycardia, don't do, don't yeah. proceed to yeah. do the other that. So it's my recommendation because I recommend always to do oculocardiac reflex. And oh, it is right. almost included in the, almost any, any protocol, but I do recommend. Yeah, for myself, I have a little bit confusion when, the, when you mentioned that there is some maybe resistance, cerebral blood flow, despite the clinical criteria of brain death. So how to yeah. clarify this area? Yeah, because for brain death, it, it, the, first, the first point we all of us, we must clarify is what concept 
of frame that we are using, what definition and considerably what criteria. And it is because it is important. So if it is very, very important because sometimes we are talking about this false positive, false negative. Blah, blah, blah. So the key is if we are using the whole brain dead concept, that I, I think nobody, I think, or I, I'm sure that none of us, nobody is against a, a whole brain dead concept. Yeah. One of the problems, it is uh, usually uh, the, usually you can find one patient with uh, no activity of the brain stem, but can still have flow. Why, for example, hematomas of brain, brain stem hematomas of cerebellum. What is the yes. problem at this point? My point of view is this patient, the medical school, UK, say person in, in brain stem death are dead person. So in this case, but you have to admit that some of them have flow on the brain because right. the concept and the protocol come from the, come from the definition. Okay. It is the first step to, to, uh, to decide. To decide what is the concept. But if we yeah. use the concept yeah. of whole brain death, we have to analyze the flow. If we use the concept of brain standard, we don't need to analyze the flow. Yeah. Because yeah. if not, okay. we are using in some patients brain stem death, and in another patient, whole brain death. And I think, from my point of view, from the medical point of view, a medical school must do that, I think. And my recommendation, and now we are in the field of donation and transportation, uh, field, is to, view, to use whole brain death. Because oh, if you, not only for ethical, biological, and anthropological reasons, because the number of donors, if you analyze the map in general, in general, the countries okay. where it is used whole brain death, it is very similar to the countries with highest number of donors because ICU doctors feel very comfortable, biological and medical. Yeah. Dr. Catherine, do you like to give any comment on Dr. Josie Maria talk? Uh, well, in, one minute. in one minute, a wonderful talk and, and a subject um, that I brought it. I mean, in Ireland, we don't, we, we, we tend to, uh, we, we sort of equate the two whole brain death, but we actually tend, um, our confirmatory tests are predominantly blood flow tests. Yeah. So while we say we equate the two, we probably truly think in whole death uh, tests, but we don't require people to actually do them. But we do require very strict radiological evidence of yeah. brain damage, which is which very frequently shows you no flow anyway in terms of what you see. So um, that that's, that's what we do. And Whatever, I mean, I'm very confident when I complete my testing that the patient is dead if I have done all of my things properly. And one of the things that you be really careful about is the confounders and make sure that you take your time. Make sure there are no confounders, that there are no drugs. Give them time. Time is not your enemy. Time is your friend here to be absolutely sure of the diagnosis because it's very important for the family and the donor that the procedures are done properly and you are confident of your diagnosis. And I think that's probably the best advice I've ever been given. There is, there's, there's, there is no hurry. Your, 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 your responsibility is to the patient in the bed that you have in front of you. And then to make that diagnosis accurately is very important. All right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you 